Welcome to the Power Talk Show with me, Dominic George. It's another Wednesday and it's nice to know that you're watching and you're viewing from home. So today we are talking about youth in action and uh, this topic is a very important topic because so many young people these days, they're realizing that complaining and, and moaning about how life is tough and bad does not solve anything. But the best thing is to get into action, to do something. Use your talent, use what you can to get involved to make the society a better place. Because leadership is all about contributing to positive difference. And you can do that with the little you have within the immediate uh, uh, environment that you live at. There's someone who said, if you want to change the world, start by cleaning your doorstep. So that 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 is good enough. Like, start there. I, I forget who, who said that. And so today we're talking about youth in action. And with me, uh, my guest today is... Evelyn Carijo, Carijo, Carijo. I actually, we, we, I'll speak about that. Actually, I think it's an R or an L, and my Kikuyu is attacking my tongue right now, and I've forgotten. So she is the project director at Why Act um, um, Ref again, Health Africa, and she'll be speaking to us about uh, youth in action. And also today we have Leziki Band, again not Riziki, uh, still training myself, and on, on, on that is Leziki Band. They'll be entertaining us. They're here with us today, and so go to our social media pages at, at Y254 at Y254 channel, Instagram, uh, Facebook, and Twitter. And also you can go to my own page at I am Kamau Mwangi, Facebook, Twitter, and uh, Instagram. And keep this conversation going. If you have any suggestions, opinion, or questions, please do go to these pages and talk to us. So Youth in Action, what are you doing to make a difference? What are you doing to get involved? What Have you have you stopped complaining about how, how tough uh, the life is or how bad the government is or how unfair life is and you have chosen to be proactive and get involved that's the conversation we are having today and so now i'm going to give it to uh leziki band to entertain us with their first item believe you me today we've got a it's their first time on the show and they are so psyched to give you their very best so leziki band let's go Mamu 
It was so, it's so good. Actually, I'm really enjoying myself here. Uh, Leziki Band performing their, their first song right there. And uh, who, is, who has the mic? Let me see. Who has the mic? No, you, you go ahead. Go ahead. Speak from there. Which, what, what's the name of that song? Uh, the title? This song is called Baby Baby. Baby Baby. Actually, it's a cover of song. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah. And uh, you, 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 you all uh, wrote the cover yourselves? Yeah, we, 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 we redid the cover. You, you redid the cover yeah. yourselves. That's, yeah. that's pretty good, man. Uh, so, Mulianzalini. Uh, we have been on for about an year now. One Since, year now? Yeah, one year. Why Leziki? Leziki means legendary music. Actually, there is a long story behind the okay, name. Okay, okay. Yeah, legendary music. So we just shortened the name Leziki. Uh -huh. Well, probably one of these days you'll come and tell me about that long story behind it. We will, sure. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. I'll be, uh, we'll be uh, hearing from you again, isn't it? Yeah. All right, great. Now, we, we're back with Evelyn Carrizo. And uh, as I said, now she sent me a, a profile here. And I want just to read it out here because what you know, the guest that I bring for you. So, Evelyn Carrizo is the project director at Y Act Youth in uh, Action at Amrev Health, uh, you know, Health Africa. She holds a master's degree in international public health from the University of... USIU, University, no, United States, oh yeah, you know, United States? Oh, Univer oh, University of Liverpool, my goodness. And International Public Health and Global Executive MBA in Health and Leadership and Management. That is from? USIU. USIU, Africa. USIU Africa, okay. And the leadership and, ma okay, sorry, passionate about young women leadership and is currently the youngest person holding a position of senior management at AMREF. Africa. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Dominic. First of all, congratulations for being the youngest person at senior management at AMREF. Thank you, and it's such an honor to be here mm -hmm. just to share my leadership journey, um, to share about what I do, of course, with young people, and especially to inspire young women leaders. So I'm really happy and excited to be it, here. It's an honor. It's a pleasure to have you. I mean, it's, it's a humbling moment to, to meet, uh, you know, you know, there is this show in uh, one of the channels, it's called Miss, Miss President. And so it is good to see young people like you who are, um, you know, uh, they're stepping up and saying, you know, yeah, we've got this. So now, first of all, you became a, you became a senior manager at Amref at the age of 31. You still look 25, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. I'll yeah. take that as a compliment. Uh -huh. yeah. Now, how long did you were you there before you, you got into senior management? So what's interesting about uh, my journey is that I've worked um, for Amref uh, close to eight years now. I actually started before I completed my undergraduate mm -hmm. studies mm -hmm. at Kenyatta University. Mm -hmm. I was doing my degree in public health then. So I started off as an intern. And I think my story is all about um, changing the narrative of young people in leadership and just showing young people that you can actually grow and rise through the career path mm -hmm. um, from a lower level and that we need to be patient about it. So yes, I started, I started as an intern. I worked in uh, four different departments over a span of uh, close to six, six to seven years. And then, um, of course, I became a manager at a very young age, at 28. Wow. And then at 31, uh, the opportunity for the Youth Advocacy Project came in, and I think for me that was my highlight. You, in fact, became, you entered into management at 28. And exactly. then you, you, you rose the management ladder at again at 31. Yes. Wow, that's, that's amazing. So what, what's all about why ACT? 
Wow, why Act Youth in Action? Mm -hmm. uh, the initiative that I lead is one of the fastest growing networks of youth-led organizations and youth advocates in Kenya. Mm -hmm. So our purpose is to ensure that young people are meaningfully engaged in decision making and in policy making. So we're providing young people with skills, with a voice, be able to amplify, um, of course, uh, their voice on issues that affect them across gender equality and across sexual and productive health and rights. Mm -hmm. So one of the unique aspects we have come up with right now at Y Act is all about meaningful youth engagement. And I think that's what the discussion is about today. That as young people, we need to be given the opportunity to be on decision making tables, not just because we are young, it shouldn't be a mm. token. Yeah. We need to be given these positions because we are knowledgeable, because we have um, the capacity and the capability to contribute effectively to decision making and to policy making. So why act creates that platform for young people to be able to amplify their voice and to get themselves mm. on platforms of decision making. And I think I'll be talking a bit about that because what we are trying um, to change at this point is to get policy makers and decision makers to view young people as resources. As resources, not just a liability or people exactly. just to tell what to do. Mm -hmm. And what um, inspired us, of course, is the fact that if you look at Africa, uh, the population of young people is quite high. I think mm -hmm. Africa has uh, the youngest population across the globe. If you look at Kenya right now, over 70% of the population is below 35 years. That's a huge population, yeah. Exactly. So the potential to just mm. reap, you know, the economic benefits, if at all as a country we invest is young people mm -hmm. is at its greatest right now. So it's really important for policymakers and decision makers to agree and to um, acknowledge mm -hmm. that investing in young people is a smart investment. That's so basically, if, if I'm getting you, so why okay. act gets basically encourages young people to get into the public arena, right? Exactly, and we provide them with skills so as to be able to carry out advocacy effectively, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. as to be able to get themselves on uh, decision-making tables. Uh, so let's say, so let's say, sorry, so let's say we have uh, a band like Leziki, right? Yeah. And they want to advocate for the space of, uh, of, of music and art, right? Yes. So they come to Y Act. Exactly. So and, uh -huh. uh, the good thing with what we offer is that the skills can cut across a range of... Um, topics or arts, so even Leziki Band, I know mm -hmm. that they're doing quite a lot, it's not to advocate on an issue, it's all about identifying what problem are you trying to address. So if they're using art, for example, they need to first identify the problem and the issue that they want to address uh, in policy and decision making, then they need to do their research well, they need to package their message well, they need to know that policy makers and decision makers are people who sometimes are busy, so you just need to be able to pitch in a very effective way. So we give young people the skills to be able to do this and to be able to get their messages across to policymakers in an effective way. That's, a, that's great work that you do right there. So Thank your you. work now is to make sure that these voices get heard, all right? So you exactly. prepare the young people so their voices can get heard. And sorry, if I just um, mm. can add a bit about that. The mm. other unique thing that we are doing is ensuring that young people see this as a two-way process. We don't want young people to just be given um, these positions and opportunities without getting ready. So what we're encouraging young people to do is also be prepared, be educated. I was told you are invited to a meeting, whether it's a public participation forum or just any board meeting. Show up on time, dress the part, uh, you know, be prepared, be educated, have your facts with you make sure you have your evidence well packaged. Mm -hmm. So we want this to be a two-way process where uh, policymakers engage young people, but also we young people are taking an active, you know, a proactive um, step. Educated approach, yeah. Exactly, mm -hmm. in ensuring that we are heard and that our voices and views mm -hmm. are taken into consideration. So it, it, it requires, you know, a deliberate and very decisive process mm -hmm. and step by young people. So we shouldn't just sit back and, and wait uh, and yeah. hope and complain. that we yeah and complain mm -hmm. and hope that these positions, you know, are going to come we'll our way. Will eventually come to us, yeah. We yes, go to so work away there. Exactly. So as young people we need to be proactive. Mm. We need to take up that challenge. You know, someone who thinking about AMREF, they might, they might only think the, the only thing you deal about, talk about is health and all mm. that, right? So it's interesting to realize that uh, AMREF has a branch that talks about advocacy, talks about good governance, talk, uh, talks about even personal grooming uh, when you, in terms of an interview. Now, in, in this context, I don't know if you, you saw the, there was a comment on Facebook when I posted about you coming here. 
about comprehensive sexual education. There, are, there, mm -hmm. are, there are people who are for it, and there are groups that are against it, right? And uh, when when some people knew that I was inviting you, they were like, "Okay, why are you inviting this person?" And they are part of those pushing for comprehensive se sexual education. What's your take? So I think when discussing a topic like comprehensive sexuality education, it's important to understand the context within which it is it is discussed. And of course, the challenges and problems that are underlying this whole discussion and what exactly we want to address. So one thing you need to understand is that right now in Kenya, uh, when you look at the young people, we are most affected by most SRHR um, issues. If you look at reports by NACC, um, right now, the new infections of HIV, I think over 50% are among adolescents aged 15 to 24. These are things that people don't talk about. Uh, when you look at issues of teenage pregnancy, I think which was a, a, a big thing and was declared a national disaster um, just a few months ago, about one in every three girls gets pregnant before they get to the age of 18. So without understanding this context and without looking at what is the underlying problem and what's the underlying issue here, it's hard for people to understand why we talk about, why even advocates talk about CSC. Mm -hmm. So one thing we need to know, and you look at the whole issue of teenage pregnancy, and uh, we need to understand, if you look at um, reports even by the National Gender and Equality Commission, a lot of this happens within the context of gender-based violence. Most girls who mm -hmm. get pregnant mm -hmm. before, uh, before they're 18 mm -hmm. are actually defiled, they are abused. L let, me, let me interrupt. Yeah, yeah yes. I, I understand, I understand uh, I, where you, I'm, I'm trying to see the logic of those people who are against CSE, right? Exactly. I understand your logic. I see where you're starting from, and it's very valid. I'm seeing on the, on the other side, you have people who are saying, okay, sexual education is good, but why, why do you have to teach a seven-year-old that uh, touching himself in a in pleasurable way is sexual education? So the thing about sexual education, it has mm. to be age appropriate. And I'm sure the uh, respective ministries, whether it's the Ministry of Education and Health, if they are to formalize this curriculum, it has to be very uh, age appropriate. I like the discussion that's coming up on social media, you know, on Facebook. When you see discourse around a certain issue, it mm. means it's important and it means that it affects people. It's bad if, you know, and topic like CSC is introduced and no one says mm. anything about it. Yeah. So I do understand the perspectives that people bring to the table. It's important to have all stakeholders to just get to understand what is it that we are trying to address? Mm -hmm. What are the gaps? True. Because maybe there are gaps. Anyway. What are the gaps that we want to address? <laughs> so just just having everyone on the yeah. table to give yeah. their views, I think for me is key. Anyway, it's, uh, it's okay. I mean, uh, it, was, it was a passing comment that I, I noticed and I thought of bringing it up, but that's not uh, you know, part why we, we were here today. But either way, now, uh, you know, many people, many young people are stuck with the idea that you can only get promoted by you know, uh, when you know people, you know, right? What is the one thing that made you unique? You know, w you talk about when you want to be in an organization and be valuable, you have to be indispensable. That's why you have to commit to excellence in delivery of service. What What is your thing that made you unique and stand out? It's an interesting question because for me, it's, it's not just about one thing. It was a series of actions, deliberate actions and steps that I took, you know, from an early age and just when I started off um, my career as an intern. And yes, I've had all that um, narrative about, you know, you need to know people to get your way up. For young women like me, it's even worse. You know, people say for young women to get up, you need to um, sleep your way up, which mm -hmm. is really mm -hmm. bad. Yeah. So the stigma and the, just that um, negative perception about, especially young women in leadership, is something we need to strongly talk about because it is not true. I know many young people who've honestly worked their way up. So for me, um, number one, and what I always tell young people, yes, you need to work hard. You need to be able to take on the extra mile, even without additional pay. Mm. So whether you're a volunteer, whether you're at, an, uh, at a lower level as you're starting off career, you need to be able to, uh, and agree, to take on extra work. That's how you learn, that's how you gain experience, that's how you build your track record, that's mm. how you build your profile. Number two, you'll always need mentors and people to support you to give you the opportunity to actually show that you're able to perform mm -hmm. as a leader. For me, the defining moment was when I got the scholarship to undertake the executive MBA. 
at uh, USIU because that's when I learned all about team leadership. That's when I learned about uh, myself as mm -hmm. a person. Mm -hmm. So it was all about self-awareness. What are my strengths? What are, what are my weaknesses? How do I manage teams? How do I understand uh, what strengths and weaknesses everyone brings mm -hmm. to the table? Mm -hmm. How do I align that so that we're able to achieve you know, the objectives? The objective and mission. And, and which is one thing that you think you observing leadership today, you think from your experience, from mm. what you've learned and experienced, is the one thing or two things that are lacking leadership. Not just I'm not talking about politics, I'm talking about across the board. Across the board when I look at what is lacking. Yeah, the key thing, yeah. I'll combine it. It's integrity and lack of humility. Okay. And especially for us young people, when I look at the issue of humility, most times we get caught up in uh, status, in power, you know, in money, we forget about serving others. So it's all about uh, being able and accepting to go into the trenches, working with people even at, at a lower level. So for example, in my office, if my assistant, for example, wasn't in, would I agree to take calls for her the mm. whole day? Would I agree to do something that's not Usually it's done by the... Uh, Exactly. So it's all about um, being able to serve, being humble, mm -hmm. you know, position. Of course, the issue of integrity. I know as young people, we've gotten a lot of stones thrown our way on um, issues of integrity, which mm -hmm. is not good. I think you even had the president the other day saying he doesn't trust uh, young people. Yeah, we don't know what I pesa. Exactly, which didn't go down well with some of us. Definitely, because we've, um, a good majority. Yeah, yeah. Mm. we've defied the odds in terms mm. of leadership and we've really um, exemplified mm. leadership. Mm. So but the issue of integrity, I agree, it's key. And, and humility. Exactly. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. Now before you go take a, a break and take it back to Leziki, uh, I, have, I have this question for you. There, you know, there are people who would say that the reason women are not going up there is because of patriarchy. You hear that term so often, mm. I get exhausted hearing it. Now, but there are women on the other side who say, well, it's a man's world. You know, so sometimes they are their own enemy. What, what's your take on this? What's your take on this? Do uh, do do you think that uh, women are 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 taking the chance to fight back and to take their chances, or do they want to be given on a silver platter? Is it w w what is it? You know, there was this talk of let's let's actually put a third of uh, you know this law, you know, the, the, the gender rule. And someone was asking, look, why can't the third, uh, why can't women vote for that? They are already more than a good number of voters, you know? So my, in this regard, being mm. in a, still let's say a very man's world in a senior management in most organizations, right? W what is your take on this? It's a complicated question, but. Yeah, it is. And the issue of patriarchy is quite an unfortunate issue. Mm -hmm. uh, we can't bury our heads in the sand and deny the fact that uh, when you look at our society, women are always not given the same opportunities as men. So that's when you look even at education, the fact that we are saying that young women over 30 percent get married by the time they are 30 years. It starts at that age where the opportunities of that young girl to get the education to fulfill their life's potential is cut off. So that's why we say it's important, unless we address those issues, it's important to still keep giving young women and even women in general an opportunity to lead. When we're able to address those issues and make sure that women have equal opportunities as men in terms of education, in Le terms of... I have to ask you something <laughs> question there. <laughs> Let me you said about 30 years, you know, and, and I was like, okay, look, a, a woman's <laughs> biological clock, you know, the fertility level starts going down at the age of 30. I'm a psychologist. I have to talk about these things. Now, okay. you, how, how, how does that have to be blamed on men now? I'm not blaming it on okay <laughs> on patriarchy. It, it's patriarchy exactly. How? So it's about how we how our society is, how we are cultured. Uh, uh. So people have to start looking at this issue, you know, from a very early age. If young girls and boys were being given the same opportunity, honestly, we wouldn't mm. be talking about two thirds. No, I I, I, I agree to that. Very, I agree to that. It would be a very fair We need to level exactly. equality of opportunities. Yes. But if the outcomes are different, we cannot blame anyone. Okay, Dominic. we'll talk about that. Let's take a break. Uh, we're going to take a break uh, right now, and we'll come back uh, talking to Evelyn Carrijo, the project director, Why Act uh, Amref Health Services Africa. And I'm going to give it back to I'm going to give it back to Leziki Band to give us another set of amazing performance. Enjoy. <laughs> Dale. 
you I need to be gas so daily In kawa maisha makali for you I need to be gas so daily Atujiki mu maisha ni you for you I need to lenga vi penzi Need to lenga vi do baby for you I need to lenga vi penzi A family and ili enzi for you I need to be gas so daily In kawa maisha makali for you so daily, I do take him on my shot new for you. I need a linga be penzi, I need a linga be penzi. Mega to be get on the valley, honey. To kiss on the back you are kidani. What penzi at we at a back you tani. Oh, yeah. So to see the shan. I told the covers as you were to was it to can. No go for what to for dangi. So daily, in our my shama kali for you. I need to be gas so daily. I do take him my shan for you. I need a lenga vi penzi. Need a lenga vi penzi for you, for you. My penzi ni awa willi ya for two. It's true. I never want another way with two. It's you. Oh, never leave me lonely. Oh yeah yeah. Oh yeah yeah. Oh baby, go jana me. Tunde pole pole nchese hardi dani. Kanyage kwa migu misi na party party. Na pete kwa kidole ni to me me daddy. Oh na 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 na, baby na ngara kwa sana kwa ko janja sina na moyo una tan 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 tara yeah hey. Oh na 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 na, baby sukuje kwa tichani kufunze kutoka ampa kaza na kambala penzi situa kaza baby for you. I need a linga vi penzi, family ni vi enzi for you. I need a big so daily, linga wa maisha makali for you. I need a big so daily. I do take him on my journey for you. I need a linga vi penzi, need a linga vi penzi. Leziki band, welcome back. Awesome. Beautiful music right there by Leziki Band. Welcome to the Part Talk Show. They are still here. Don't go away. They'll still be performing once again uh, one or two uh, songs as they go on. And they'll be coming throughout the month of February. We have agreed on that. I have not told them, but we have agreed. Uh, so we're back with uh, Ev Evelyn Carrijo, the project director at Y Act. And we are speaking about leadership as we as we conclude. And remember, if you have some, if you want to ask a question, you can uh, text us. You can, I mean, you can go to our social media handles at Y254, at uh, Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook, and comment on the, on, the, on, on the conversation, ask your opinion or suggestion to us. So welcome back. We were speaking about leadership, right? And uh, the thing I want you to, to, to do is like, what is your challenge, uh, of leadership, what's your leadership challenge, basically, to young people who might look at you and say, okay, uh, I would like to do what you did. What what are the similar? What are some of the pointers that you could give me so that I can be able to, you know, someone uh, someone viewing you out there? One, as a young leader, you have to be prepared to work three times harder than anyone else just to prove yourself because there's all this um, negative perception just around our society that young people can't make decisions or that we do not have uh, the experience or the knowledge. So you need to be able to work uh, three times harder. Mm -hmm. 
in terms of studying, in terms of just ensuring that you understand um, your area of leadership, being assertive, being decisive. So that's one of the challenges you have to overcome. Mm -hmm. um, I'll keep talking about the issue of humility because one thing, even as a young leader, one has to know how to work with mentors and with other adult leaders. Um, you can't just be proud and assume that you, that okay, now I'm on the seat. Mm -hmm. I can do whatever I, can do whatever I, want. I want. Yeah, correct. One has to be ready, you know, to, to work with other people, even mm -hmm. older people. In most of the projects that I've managed, I've worked with older people other than this project where I actually in action where I'm working with a team of young people. But before that, it was just everyone across, you know, mm -hmm. the age spectrum. Mm -hmm. So just being able to work with uh, people of all of ages, all, of all ages yeah. and mm. um, also agreeing to, to 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 listen and to be taught mm -hmm. even if you're in leadership position I yeah. think that's one of the things we as young people need to to consider uh, the other challenge of course as I said as a young woman I mean the challenges are there we have to prove that we um, got our leadership positions by merit and it's it's a sad reality that you know we have to go around this all this negative mm, perception mm. stigma and it's something that i really want to keep talking about just to inspire other young women that uh, you need to be confident you just can about step up, your yeah. exactly about yourself mm. you don't need to to prove to anybody mm. um what you have so i think this the challenges of being a young woman leader are very different mm -hmm from being a, a, a young exactly. gentleman so back to the patriarchy well you know come on come on um, now you 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 are you, what, what do you what do you mean what what how different is it it's so different and especially as a young person and i'll talk from my own experience because this these are things that i'm writing about so i'll soon be launching my journal on that absolutely that's great congratulations on that uh, i'm looking you. forward Yes, uh -huh. we'll be, i'll quote you in my journal <laughs> this issue of patriarchy yes, yes. we need to talk about mm -hmm. So one, especially as a young woman leader, when you get to the top, if you're not married, that's another issue. You so start, you, you, you're not seen as mature? Oh yeah. No, no, not uh, that. Uh. That you're intimidating, that you know you should have prioritized family over working too hard and uh, being a career person. Okay, that's plain silly. Okay. Exactly. But it's the reality. And I think that's why for me I decided, you know, to write about these things, talk about them, because I realized even people who are educated like me, actually have those negative perceptions but Which okay let me pause right there you know, I know you're going yes i'm gonna i'm gonna <laughs> i'm actually gonna um, say there is someone like uh another gentleman i uh, larry actually uh, larry mado he also was accused of you know see so it's not just a woman it's thing okay okay at it's not just now that you've given the, the example of larry mado uh -huh. okay I oh you had, you had seen that also right yes mm -hmm. but a majority of these cases happen for us young women. So it's something we need to overcome. It's something that we need to talk about. You get flattered with more, that, that definitely. Exactly. So we need to talk about these mm. issues openly and just let people know. It's okay for your daughters, for your sisters to be successful at mm. a young age. They don't need to wait till they're 40 to become a CEO. Mm -hmm. You know, it's okay to just succeed at whatever age, you know, at a young age. It's still fine. So that's the thing we need to be inspiring young women. I, I'm I'm all for women, by the way. I'm very supportive of women. I just don't want you to like every challenge you have on the way has something to do with men. Like that's what I have a problem with. You understand? Like I understand, Dominic. <laughs> because sometimes unfortunately, it's uh, our uh, society. That's why I said if we start, you know, at the very initial stages of life, uh -huh. and we give equal opportunities to young women and men, we, I mean, we will not ha be having these discussions um, in a few years to come. Well, we will hope so. We we are aiming for that anyway, isn't it? So I want I want to give you uh, thirty seconds or so as we finish up uh, on this conversation. Mm -hmm. To I don't know, Lou, you can look at one of the cameras. Uh, camera one, uh, camera one is right here, and I want you to like lay your leadership challenge. What is it that you can tell young ladies watching out there, or the young people watching out there? What is the thing that you can tell them? The words of advice and encouragement and motivation. Go for it. In terms of advice and encouragement, be confident about who you are. You need to step up your game. You need to show up. Do not sit and wait for these opportunities to come. You have to go the extra mile. You still need to work with um, other people to mentor you and be patient about success. Success doesn't come you know, all at once. So one has to be very patient, um, humble, and work extra hard. Perfect. Evelyn Carrijo, it's been a pleasure having you on the show.
All right. So thank you so thank much. You. And I hope when you release that journal, you'll come back to discuss with us. Sure. Congratulations once again. We, uh, we are all kudos for, you know, getting into senior management so young, so getting into a place where many young people only dream, dream about and encouraging young people to get there. All right. Thank, thank you, you so Dominic. much. So ladies and gentlemen, you've been speaking about the, the, the rules. You remember that you've been from the from the very first go, we were speaking about the rules from my from the uh, book Twelve Rules for Life that I've been speaking about. This so the first rule was don't be pathetic, you know. Be a person who is able to step up. And I think that's something that has been told to us by Evelyn. Uh you you've got to be confident confident about yourself. Life is uh, rough. So be have the courage to to fight back. And the second rule that I shared with you is about treating yourself kindly because you need to for you to be able to fight back you need to be fit you need to be healthy so you need to sleep enough take care of yourself if something goes wrong take time to process those emotions today on the third rule uh, Jordan Peterson uh, reminds us about quality friends uh, someone said if you are the smartest person in a room it is time to move out you cannot have people you cannot have friends who never encourage you and challenge you in any way there is nothing you can look at some of your best friend and say you know this person encourages me to be better so you have to have friends who constantly push the best the potential out of you that is a good friend and you know jordan peterson asks a very pointed question that person you call your friend can you recommend that person to your mother or to uh, as a son to your uh, or a daughter can you recommend that person to your sister as a boyfriend or even just as a friend if you cannot then why are you keeping this person to you for yourself so the people you surround yourself with remember that old saying that goes uh, uh, show me who your friends are and I tell you who you are you know you cannot go telling your mother mom you know my my friends smoke and do drugs but I don't I'm so good it, it doesn't work that way all right so uh, peer pressure eventually comes and gets to you so one of the things that uh, this clinical psychologist uh, reminds us is the people you surround yourself with are going to determine in a very big way how far you're gonna go so surround yourself with people who want the best for you people you can share about something that is good that that something good that has happened in your life and they can be genuinely happy have you ever told some of your best friend that something good has happened to you and you can see it in your eyes like the jealousy or the discomfort they are not they are not capable of being there to be happy for you that is that is not a good friend at the same time when you mess up a good friend is willing to tell you hey that's not the best way to go so that's the third rule that you're talking about today quality friends equals to quality life and this has been the power talk show with me dominic and i hope that you have learned one thing or two from uh, evelyn carrizo the project director at why act uh, amref health africa and also you've picked something from my discussion with you on uh, quality friends and quality life and i hope to see you next time on wednesday catch the show again and may god bless you be exceptional make a difference Good night, and I'm going to give it back to Liziki, Liziki band to close up the show with one or two songs. You ready? Let's go. Your face so pretty and sassy Nataka Uenami You look so fine, you got me hey, hey, hey. When you looked into my eyes Baby, you caught me by surprise And I knew, and I knew, and I knew it was a sign Yeah, you seem so nice Baby, you got no prize And I know that you know that I want you by my side Oh, Kadash baby, see I'm in love with you, you're yes, my child I'ma go like that, I'ma go like that We'll be okay, loving all day Just call me your baby We'll be okay, loving all day Just call me your baby Baby, let go, we go. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
kadi kadi ashi ashi she got me crazy crazy love you love you I'm in love with her I love her she love me we love no trouble her figure her shape is so tender so stable I like it the way that she giving me trouble and I'm the trouble Haya kaka usije na maringo skibiri papa ndakufanya my hero suteleza kidogo twende mpaka dar you know chai oh kadash baby see i'm in love we do your smile chai i'm a go like that i'm a go like that oh kadash baby see i'm in love we do your smile chai i'm a go like that i'm a go like that Kadash mi na wembelele unipe mapenzi na yawe tele nifanye mshizi tusonge mbele Yeah 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 Kadash mi na wembelele unipe mapenzi na yawe tele nifanye mshizi tusonge mbele Oh yeah yeah nipende nikupende usinitenge nikutupe ukitaka nitakupa we Yeah 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 nipende nikupende usinitenge nikutupe wewe ukitaka nitakupa wewe Hey Kadash baby see I'm in love with you you are my child I'm a go like that I'm a go like that Oh Kadash baby see I'm in love with you you are my child I'm a go like that I'm a go like that Hey Yeah. Big up to Team YG at your zone. Lazy Kiban here. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. A dash baby see I'm in love with you your smile chai. I'm a go like blah. I'm a gone like blood yeah yeah Kadash baby see I'm in love with you you smell chai I'm a gone like blood I'm a gone like blood yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah